This night vision device is a Low Light Innovations Eternus. This is a set of non-articulating binocular night vision, so you can kind of think of it as being analogous to a RNVG, the ruggedized night vision goggles. This is actually a 3D printed night vision housing that's becoming quite a lot more popular these days. You see that with stuff like the panel bridge, as well as lightweight 3D printed monocular pods and various articulating and fixed sets of binocular night vision like this one. The Aeternus, whether you buy it as a standalone housing to build yourself or buy it as a complete unit, is a fair amount cheaper than a set of RNVGs for a couple of reasons. One is the 3D printed construction. The other is a somewhat simplified feature set. This housing comes from a company called Low Light Innovations. You may know of them already because they make those little screw-on colored filters that can turn your green phosphor night vision into sort of an ersatz white phosphor night vision or maybe some other colors as well. I've never really had a use for those, but some people do swear by them, either because they reduce eye strain or just because the colors make your night vision look really cool. Since this device was introduced, Low Light Innovations has also come out with a 3D printed articulating housing called the LLUL21. I'm not going to talk about that much here, just to point out that it exists. So the advantages of a binocular night vision device like the RNVG is that it should be rugged and cheap. The failure point on a lot of articulating night vision devices is the pods that swing up because there's a hinge mechanism and there can be a fairly temperamental electronic cutoff system so that the pods shut off individually as you raise them up or down. You can probably go Google one of the popular binocular housings right now and find a picture of one with the pod sheared right off. I don't know how common that is, but it is still something of a concern, which is what leads some people to decide they want to go with RNVGs. I got this housing because I wanted to try a set of binocular night vision that didn't have articulating pods to see if I could live without that feature. I also got this over a set of RNVGs because this is newer and fairly unproven. A lot of people have already owned and talked about RNVGs before. I sent my AGM NVG40s to a night vision builder. He harvested the intensifier tubes out of them and installed them in this housing for me. The simplified feature set of the Aeternus housing is actually a good fit for the intensifier tubes that were in those NVG40s. They're an old set of Omni 4s with automatic gain control, probably surplus aviation tubes. The Aeternus housing does not have a provision for manual gain control. There's no gain control knob, and you wouldn't be able to install MX11769 tubes in here without removing the gain control system. This housing accepts MX11160 intensifier tubes, which are the automatic gain version of the same intensifier tube you would find in certain PVS14s. This housing also takes mil-spec PVS-14 optics. That's a big upgrade for me, coming from the AGM NVG-40 housing, which uses some much cheaper proprietary glass. The lenses have that weird lens flare effect, and the eyepieces are very small, so the field of view doesn't feel as big, and you have to get them very close to your eye. This housing is set up with regular mil-spec style PVS-14 glass front and rear, and it makes these intensifier tubes look way better than they did in the NVG-40. In addition to lacking a manual gain control system, the Aeternus also doesn't have an onboard IR illuminator. So the power switch is a very simple one position switch. It's either off or on. There is no position to either flash the illuminator or lock the illuminator on. That's not a big deal at all. The onboard illuminator on a night vision device is only used for something like map reading or signaling. It does not provide adequate supplemental illumination. For that, you use a weapon light or a helmet mounted task light or something like that. Since I got this housing, I believe Low Light Innovations has introduced a Generation 2 version of the Aeternus that replaces that switch with a push button, which makes sense. The switch only has one position, so it might as well just be a button. So on to the specifics of the device. The Aeternus is powered by a single CR123 battery installed at the front. It has a switch to turn it off and on, and the pods can be moved inboard and outboard with the little rotating knobs on the sides of the housing. That's how you set the interpupillary distance of the device to match your human face. One thing that's worth noting is that if you adjust the night vision device forwards or backwards on the mount, for example, moving it a little bit forward so you can put safety glasses on underneath it for shooting, or if you're not using safety glasses, moving it back closer to your eyes for a slightly better view, you may have to slightly readjust the IPD because the distance to your eye has changed a little bit. The mount interface on the Aeternus is a dovetail. I've been using this with a Norotos Rhino with a Mod Armory PYRM dovetail conversion. I also have been using it more recently with a Norotos dovetail Losto mount. So what is it like to live without articulating pods? There are a couple of big downsides to not having articulating pods that I knew about going in. I just wanted to see how much they would actually affect me in the real world. One of the advantages of articulating pods is that you can fold the device much flatter against your helmet when it is stowed. With the NVG40, if I stowed it up on my helmet and then collapsed the pods down to the side, they were low profile enough that I could just barely squeeze myself into my truck. 
although my truck is a fairly small truck and I'm a fairly large guy, so it's a little tighter for me than it might be for you. That was when I used the NVG40 in conjunction with a Norotos Rhino and a PYRM dovetail conversion. That is just not an option with the Aeternus, which is why I picked up the Norotos Losto. The Losto is a much more low profile mount, and when the device is stowed, it's not as far up on your helmet, it's more farther forward out over your eyes. It is less comfortable, but it definitely moves the device out of the way, and I can once again sort of squeeze back into my truck. That's definitely not an ideal place to stow your night vision. Something like the Wilcox G24 would be sort of a middle ground between the low stow and a Norotos Rhino. Because I'm tall and I drive a small truck, I need every little bit that I can. It's not just getting into vehicles, of course, there's also doorways or overhanging branches in the woods. All sorts of reasons why you might want your night vision device to store a little more compactly on the helmet. With articulating binones, you could always just flip both pods out of the way and leave the device halfway deployed in front of your face. That makes it really fast to flip down one or both eyepieces to get your night vision back online. And it also has the advantage on most binocular housings of shutting off the pod so you're not going to drain the battery or damage your night vision device. With the Aeternus, if I flip it up into the stowed position, it will just stay on up there until I remember to turn it off, which could be bad for the device and could also just be bad for battery. The other big advantage to articulating binos is the ability to flip up one of the pods to give yourself the ability to use that unaided eye again. That can be for a variety of reasons. Say you're in a very bright evening and you want to use your off eye to keep an eye on your surroundings. That's an option. It's much better than trying to use one of your eyes to look under the housing and the other eye to look through the housing because of course that's not how eyeballs work unless you're Brass Facts Dog Nova. I'm not gonna say that's something you want to do every single night, but it is an advantage of articulating duels with virtually no downsides. The other reason you might want to flip up one of your pods is so you can use another device. For example, a thermal monocular or a thermal weapon sight or, as is often the case for me, I might want to flip up one of my pods so that I can use my phone, either to record something that's going on, or check a GPS, or, you know, check Instagram because I'm bored of being at the range or something, I don't know. So, by going from an articulating binocular set to a fixed set like this, we've lost quite a bit of capability. And what we've gained is, hopefully, a little bit of ruggedness, and we've also maybe shed a couple of ounces. And then going to this 3D printed design with a couple of removed features, we have gone a little bit lighter still, and we've also shed some of the cost off of the device. The big question here is just how rugged the Aeternus is, because the RNVG is made out of aluminum and this is made out of 3D printed plastic. I have long been skeptical of 3D printing, generally I think it's a waste of plastic, but I do have to admit that this looks pretty good. Low Light Innovations make some claims about how rugged and durable this housing is. I'm not going to throw a multi-thousand dollar device on the ground for a couple of YouTube clicks, so I'm just going to take them at their word. I think this device probably best suits somebody who's going to do a home build based off of the pieces of night vision equipment that they already have. The fact that you can buy the housing by itself for fairly cheap, the fact that you can reuse existing PVS-14 intensifier tubes and optics means that this could be a pretty good homebrew solution. The lack of manual gain isn't a big deal because the intensifier tubes that I had didn't have manual gain to begin with. The loss of an onboard illuminator is not a big deal because the IR illuminators on night vision devices are borderline useless anyway. However, that's about where my recommendation is going to come to an end. I would much rather have an articulating set of duels. I suspect you would too. There are a lot of capability and quality of life benefits to having an articulating dual housing. This device is still an improvement for me because it's lighter than my previous dual housing and it also has the benefit of high quality mil-spec glass. Both features that make the loss of articulation a little easier to swallow. So the Aeternus is an upgrade for me, but I don't think most guys are best suited by a non-articulating housing. And that recommendation also goes for the RNVG. I suspect you will pretty quickly decide you want articulation if you end up with one of those as well. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Let me know if you have any questions. You can find a link in the video description to my Subscribestar page if you want to support this channel. You can also find me on Instagram and Discord, but I'm not going to provide links to those because if you're not smart enough to find them, I don't think I want you following me anyway. Thanks a lot. See you later.